So this is a new recent maths result. We've got this here, a graph, which is a network of points and lines. So you could think of it like a network of friends, a network of computers, London Underground map. These are all the classic examples of networks. Points and lines connecting together. This is slightly unusual, this graph. Look, all the points that you normally get in a graph, I've put them all in one line. And then you can see all the connections being made between those points. And when you do that, you know, these connections, these lines, they cross each other. Crisscrossing is everywhere. I wonder if we can uh, uncross these. I'll uncross them without keeping those points in a straight line. I don't know. This is a way you could uncross them. Maybe if I took some of these lines, maybe if I lift them up like that, they don't cross anymore. Oh, that's cheating, isn't it? And then maybe if I take this page here and lift this up so they don't cross anymore. And what we create is something called a book. Book? <laughs> well, do you want me to do it in a southern accent? No, it's all right. B book. <laughs> I don't know how to do it in a southern accent. It's a book. I, I do proper northern. It's a book graph. So what we've done is created a graph using four pages so that the lines now are uncrossed. And this is special because uh, this is the first one of its kind that shows that this type of graph needs four pages. And it can't be done with fewer pages. I'll put my book away and I'll tell you a little bit more about book graphs. So that's the idea. So you're going to put the points on a line. Uh, we're going to try and draw our graph, but we're going to try and connect the points uh, like their pages in a book. Let's start with a simple example. I'll just start with, I'll just do a square, four points. So now let's turn that into a book. And that means I'm going to put the points along the spine of the book. And it's helpful to number these. Let's do one, two, three and four. Yeah. Now let's do one, two, three, and four, all in a line. Well, one connects to two, two connects to three, three connects to four, four connects to one. So it goes back like that. That would be a one-page book, because I've just got this top half here that I'm using. So it's a one-page book. It does depend on the order of your vertices here. So if I do a different order, you get a different book. Let's do one, three, four, two. Then what do I need? One connects to two. Like that. Two connects to three, three connects to four, four connects to one. So I've created a two page book. Let's see if we can find something that needs three pages. Um, we could do something like a, a complete graph. A complete graph is when you have the points and the lines and everything's connected to everything else. So here is a, a classic with five points and I connect everything to everything else. So it looks like this. Now let's say I'm going to try and minimise these crossings because that's kind of what I'm trying to do with this book as well. If you match these on like elastic or string, I could pull two of these lines out. Uh, so I could do something that looks like this and it will only have one crossing. Now if I want to draw that as a book, this is how you would do it. This pentagon is a loop. Uh, so if I just name, number that as one, two, three, four and five, I'm going to draw out my points, one, two, three, four and five. Now, I'm going to do the loop first. So one connects to two, connects to three, connects to four, connects to five, five connects to one. And then anything inside the loop, I'll put on page one. Two connects to four, two connects to five. And then you can see I'm going to have that crossing there. Maybe I'll save that as the last thing I do. So I've got two connects to four, two connects to five, like that. And anything outside the loop, I'll do on page two. So what have I got? One connects to three and one connects to four. And then, yes, there was one line that I missed, which was three connects to five because I know that's going to cross and so I've got two pages here looking lovely but yeah I'm going to have to use three pages if I do it in a different colour three connects to five so that would be my third page so this graph here needs three pages if these didn't cross I would have been able to do that in two pages in fact you can make a book of any size if you've got a complete graph with n points uh, the book has n divided by two pages or it's that number rounded up so if i wanted to make a book with 100 pages you just do the complete graph with 200 points so that you can make a book of any size you want so there's nothing interesting about that right so who cares right what might be more interesting though is um what about graphs that can be untangled right let's just look at a specific kind of graph that's called a planar graph when you can untangle it here we go so if you've got a planar graph if you can draw a loop you can do it in two pages. I can do my five points again, but maybe with less lines so they don't cross over this time. So if I've got a planar graph, which means they don't cross, and I've got a loop, then I can make it two pages. Same as before, there's my loop. Anything inside is page one. Anything outside is page two. 
What about if we don't have a loop? Right, now there's a couple of ways you can get around this. If you don't have a loop, you could do, I'm going to call it a phantom loop. Uh, so it could be like this. There's no loops here. I'll call it one, two, three, and four. Uh, but I can make a phantom loop if I want to. So I can go one connects to two, two connects to three, and I, I'm going to put in an imaginary three connects to four, and four connects to one. Then using that, I can do the same idea. Here's the book, and I can go one connects to two, two connects to three, phantom three connects to four, a phantom four connects to one if I wanted to, and then what's inside that loop, uh, two connects to four. So I will draw that on page one. I can actually get a one page book here. So you can turn things that don't have loops into something that has loops. So really now we're interested in graphs that don't have crossings, that don't have loops, and you can't even do phantom loops. So there are graphs like that as well. I'll show you an example of what something like that would look like. There it is. So we've got a graph here. It's called the Golner Howery graph. And you can see it's got no crossings and it has as many edges as you can put in it as well, at least without creating any extra new crossings. So we can't even put any phantom lines in this. And this, if we turned that into a book, is going to be a three page book because uh, we can't quite use the trick I used before. So the three page book would look like this. So there we go, we've got our points in a line. We've tried our best, you know, we've connected it as a two page book and then we, we will have one extra line there that they've put in and that will have to go on the third page. So this is an example of a planar graph, which is a graph that has no crossings in it, that needs three pages. Are there any graphs that need four pages? And that was the question. We knew that there were no planar graphs that needed five pages. So we knew the answer was going to be three as a maximum or four as a maximum. And that was the conjecture. And that was a conjecture for 30 years until uh, 2020. So only recently uh, we got our graph. And that's the graph I showed you at the beginning. Uh, so let's just take another look at it. It's got 275 points. It's got 819 edges. You connect it up. It needs four pages. And every order as well needs four pages. It can't be done better. So this was, for the first time, a planar graph that needed four pages as a book. If you want to see the original planar graph, so that it's just points without any crossings in it, yeah. you'll like this, Brady. Yeah, I'm dying to see that. You'd love this. It's uh, this beautiful uh, heart-shaped graph. Wow. It's got, I'll give you options. It's got 275 vertices, 819 edges, and it was found by uh, you know, a combination of computer search, obviously mathematical methods as well. And they also used just purely mathematical methods um, to find a whole family of graphs like this that can only be done in four pages and not better. Awesome. Yeah. This episode was sponsored by Jane Street. They're a research-driven trading firm with offices all around the world. Here are some of their locations. And they're looking for smart, curious, talented people to join them. Could you be one of them? Check out janestreet.com and click here where it says Join Jane Street. It's not just jobs on offer, although there's plenty of them. They also run various programs, internships, all sorts of stuff that might be right up your alley. I've visited their offices and it's really impressive, certainly beyond any place I've ever worked. There's more on the website, check them out, and there's a link in the video description. Okay, what is the largest area if you had all the you know, diagonals fitting inside a one by one box? And I would have guessed regular hexagon but it's not. So it's this thing, so this is not a regular hexagon, 